One White Rose was written by Julie Garwood. After books like Callahan's Bride, The Colored Veil, Dangerous Magic, This Man, The Welshman's Bride, this was a much needed change of form. All right, like this year has been shit for romance, even though some of the books I've read include, you know, His Personal Agenda, The Haven, Luring a Lady. It, it seems like every romance I read has a ratio of about one to four. For every one good book I find, I'm mercilessly sodomized by the other three. It's like an unwanted gangbang of mediocrity. So you might be thinking, oh, so One White Rose is an amazing book. Not really. It's good and enjoyable, but it's been such a shit year that a book that's simply good is a breath of fresh air. So what's it about? Well, a man named Douglas finds himself the protector of a woman named Isabel and her son Parker after another guy named Boyle takes over the small town Isabel's living in. He has the law in his back pocket, so he and his men basically run the joint. Boyle killed Isabel's husband and has decided that he wants her as his bride. And despite Isabel needing to be protected throughout the book, she's a perfectly respectable lead. She isn't afraid to put her foot down, and she confronts Boyle head-on, multiple times. Hell, at the beginning of the book, when Douglas comes to her place looking into buying a horse, she pulls a gun on him. She pulls a gun on him while she's going into labor, so she's having, like, baby contractions, and she's standing in the pouring rain, having contractions with a fucking shotgun aimed right at Douglas's face. And Douglas himself is a great lead, too. He isn't the dominant type, but he's the rugged, sexy type. He's also respectful to Isabel. You know, thank God. It's nice to see a writer that had the brilliant logic of, oh yeah, a man's supposed to be nice to the woman he wants to fuck. The story goes as you would expect, with Isabel and Douglas boning, Boyle is dispatched, and the two lovers end up together in the end. There are a few minor issues I have. There's some exceptionally clunky dialogue exposition between Douglas and the town doctor about halfway through, with Douglas saying that he doesn't show emotion very well, which doesn't make sense because he's caring for Isabel and her son. And it's like, okay, you're showing affection there. I find it really funny. Writers will have characters that say, oh, well, I don't do the girlfriend thing. or I don't show love, but then they're showing love. I know they want to go for the... Um, the rugged type, the man that doesn't show love, but then the woman opens him up and all this shit. But if you're gonna do that, then actually have him not show love. It, didn't make, it makes better sense that way, guys. Come on. There's also moments where the dialogue in the book will actually bounce off of each other without any narration, so it can actually be difficult to tell who is talking when. Then there's Patty. Patty is an Irishman. His actual name is Patty Irishman. Now, in the time period this was based in, which I'm guessing is late 1800s, early 1900s, the only thing worse than being Irish was being black. And, like, I'm not trying to sound racist, okay? Women were treated better than Irish people were back then. It's the truth. Irish men and women were viewed as scum. People refused to hire them. Uh, they would put, like, signs up that said, uh, no Irish apply in certain, like, stores and stuff because they didn't want Irish people working for them. Uh, another issue with them being mistreated is a lot of them were also, also, also Catholic. See, I'm finally back after a hiatus and I can't fucking talk to save my life. They were also Catholic, so that also led to them being mistreated as well. Um, they often had to work hard labor jobs in textile and cotton mills and they were severely underpaid. And oftentimes their children had to work too. And uh, in those mills, it was common for the mill owners, if they were depraved enough, to force their female workers to do things in order to keep their jobs. So it is very likely that an Irish child was forced to work in those mills and due to that had to do uh, favors for her boss in order to keep her 10 cent a day job. And why am I bringing this up? Well, the term Patty is a slang term used to demean Irish people. I'm hoping that the author chose this name because she understood that and just wanted to be more authentic with, you know, what they would have called this guy back in the day. Which, okay, I can forgive that as long as it's not done in ignorance. But if she chose the name because she didn't understand what it meant or she didn't understand the mistreatment of the people the name's directed at, mm, just uh, do your research when you write, okay? Okay? Okay. Overall, One White Rose was an enjoyable read. 
It had its problems, but it was far more enjoyable than most of the romances I've read this year. I'm gonna give it a B plus.